I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. If you want to know the safest and least insane way of calibrating the current sensor on your flight controller. Stay tuned. If you have a flight controller with a built-in current sensor like the Betaflight F3 or the Holobro Kakute AIO, just mentioning it because I wrote the manual for it, <laughs> you may have noticed that the current sensor readout is not accurate. Uh, like, for example, it says you burned off 500 milliamp hours of battery, but when you put it back on the charger, it puts 1,000 milliamp hours back in. Or it says you took 1,000 milliamp hours out of a 1,300, but the battery's at like 13.9 volts, so clearly that ain't right. Yeah, the reason for this is that many of these boards uh, come from the factory and the manufacturer hasn't put the correct calibration value for the current sensor into the Betaflight image. You know, when you flash the target, well, that target comes with a value for the current sensor. And if they don't set the right value, then it just comes in with the default and that's probably not right for the hardware they've put on it. So. I've showed you in previous videos some ways to calibrate your current sensor. Uh, one way is the, to have your dumb friend hold the quad down to the table while you spin the motors and he prays to God that it doesn't eat his face off. To be fair, it was his quad we were calibrating, so I thought it was only fair to make him hold it down, right? Mm, makes sense. Some people pointed out that that wasn't too safe. And so the next way I showed you was to put your props on upside down and flip them over and then the copter is basically pushing down into the ground. So when you spin the motors, at least it's not trying to eat your face off, it's just trying to eat your carpet. And that was better, but it still wasn't great. Let me tell you, a prop spinning at 20,000 RPM, it's still terrifying. <laughs> it just, it's just, it, horrible. It's loud. The air is flying around and you wish you had a face mask. I should have had a face mask. So here I'm going to tell you what the safest and least insane way to calibrate your current sensor is. And many of you already know this way and I hope you've been entertained by my exposition up till now because you're not going to learn anything. And please take to the comments and tell me how you already knew this. That would be so, uh, really that's what I need. But in case you don't already know the way, the way to do it is to use the milliamp hours that the, the battery charger puts in versus the milliamp hours that the OSD or the whatever shows taken out. And if those are pretty close, then probably the amps are also pretty close. Um, it's not guaranteed. For one thing, the battery charger doesn't put in exactly the same number of milliamp hours that you took out, especially if you're running a balancing program. If you have an older battery with one maybe slightly bad cell, the charger is going to have to balance that cell and it's going to sit there and churn at the very end of the charging cycle while it brings that cell up to the level of the others. And that's all going to be extra milliamp hours that sort of don't count when you're taking them out. But if you have a relatively new battery with reasonably balanced cells, then it'll be pretty accurate. The other thing that can throw off the milliamp hour readout is the time base. Milliamp hours, as the unit suggests, is a unit of current, which is milliamps, and time, which is hours. And if the thing that is measuring milliamp hours is not measuring time accurately, then the milliamp hours will also be measured inaccurately. Here's the actual procedure. While you're flying, you end every battery at a particular number of milliamp hours. You gotta watch the OSD while you're flying. And so like if I'm flying 1300s and 1500s, I might end at a thousand. That's a little premature, but just, you know, let's just pick a number. Uh, so I end every flight at as close as I can to exactly a thousand milliamp hours. And what I'll do is as I start to round 900 milliamp hours, I'll fly back and then I'll just kind of hover in front of myself for a little while while I wait to tick over to a thousand. And then just as it ticks over to like 995, 996, 997, I'll disarm. And I'll go and plug the battery. And I know that I've taken a thousand milliamp hours out of each of these batteries. Then I'll put them on the charger and I'll see how many milliamp hours it puts back in. And I'll take the average of all of the numbers. Okay. The other thing you can do if you parallel charge is you can plug all the batteries into the parallel board and you can charge it up. And then you can look at the total milliamp hours put back in. So in my case, I had five batteries. I took a thousand milliamp hours out of each of them. That means that 5,000 milliamp hours should go back in. And I put in 4485 milliamp hours when I charged them. So I'm going to take 4485 out of 5,000 and I get 0.897. So that's how far off mine is. 
So this means that I put back in 90% of the milliamp hours that the OSD told me I took out. Or in other words, the OSD is reading about 10% high. So I need to bring the OSD down by 10%. And the way you do that is you actually increase the voltage scale to make the OSD readout come down. It works backwards from how you would think. So in order to make the OSD read 10% smaller, I need to increase this number by 10%. And it's very easy to add 10%. I don't even need the calculator. 220 plus 10% 10 of 220 is 242. And that should bring me closer to an accurate number. Now I'm gonna just, the next time I fly, I'm gonna end at 1,000 and I'm gonna see again how close I was. There will always be some variance because this isn't a perfect process. If you want a perfect process, get your current sensor out and uh, get, your, get your clamp meter out and terrify yourself by spinning the motors on the bench. But yeah, this is pretty good. It gets you pretty close and at least gives you a baseline to work off of, even if it's not completely accurate number of amps. And now you know the safest and least insane way of calibrating your current sensor. Uh, this is not a this is not a, something that I invented. It's something that other people have written about. But I thought it was only fair since I had other videos showing the insane and more dangerous way of doing it that I also do a video showing the safer way of doing it, uh, even if this way is slightly less accurate than actually getting out a clamp meter. Hope you found it educational. Uh, for those of you who already knew uh, this technique, I hope you found it entertaining. Uh, I'll be juggling next and make it all worthwhile that you watch this. <laughs> Thanks for watching and happy flying.